this plane is for sure is meant to be electric. If you look at the the frame going aft, you can see there's no there's no floor, there's barely any walls. It's basically just some framing and the covering. So if you're going to do a gas setup, you need to beef things up a little bit. I think if I hold it, hold the fuselage up to the light, you can get an idea of how weak a structure it is. It's probably I coated the firewall in epoxy so that the fuel won't soak into the wood. The plan is to mount the uh, on-off switch voltmeter right there. Now they, the directions say to mount the servos for the rudder and elevator on the back of the fuselage here. There's a couple cutouts. On both sides there's an upper cutout and a lower cutout for a standard size servo. Make sure when you cut out, because both sides have the upper and lower cutout, make sure on one side you cut out the upper and on the other side you can see it if I hold it up to the light here. You cut out the lower. So one's upper and one's lower. Otherwise, if you cut out both the uppers or both the lowers, when you stick a sand standard size servo in there, you can see the fuselage isn't very thick at that point. And the servos obviously will hit each other. So before mounting up the motor, I had fit the cowl on there to make sure everything was all right. And I drilled two holes on either side for mounting the cowling. Uh, the motor's on a standoff to get it out far enough, and I put the throttle servo in this forward compartment, uh, which is going to be near the, the fuel tank, and then I uh, went ahead and took some foam board with some screws as indexes, and I laid the foam board alongside the motor, <coughs> so as I figured out where the motor's going to come through the cowling. I went ahead and cut out the foam board and then I, once I had figured out the entire space of the motor, I took the foam board and laid it on the side of the cowling and traced the pattern to be cut out for the motor. So then after uh, having the cut out I used a straight edge to remove a section of the cowl to make it easy to slip on and off over the muffler. So here's the end result of the cowl. I have the uh, the removed piece, I can always put it back in as a removable panel later on, but uh, I'm going to leave it open right now for extra cooling. So the wing struts came with these uh, little CA things glued in the end, and that's why you're supposed to attach it. Um, you can see it's just like CA, and so I cut those off and went ahead and I put some, uh, I got some landing gear straps and I uh, drilled them out, put a screw through the end of the uh, struts and so now the attach points are, are metal which is a lot more secure. Now as far as where to drill the holes uh, I wasn't really sure, I couldn't find any kind of marks or anything. This one did bite into something. I originally drilled this one just kind of where it fell and it didn't bite into anything so I moved it aft a little bit and then it got into some good wood. So I'll have to put a little patch on that hole. Okay, now because somebody had commented that they observed a lot of flutter in the stabilizer on an electric setup, and since I'm running nitro, I thought it'd probably be a good idea to brace the tail feathers just to, to be safe. So again, I went with uh, some landing gear straps um, and some push rods and clevises. Same thing on the same thing on the top. And uh, the tail wheel um, is off my old Nitro Planes Club again. Um, I used point hedges here in the uh, rudder, which was worked out good because it gave me a gap. I didn't have to notch out for the tail wheel. Um, the only thing it did do is on the top here, it kind of because it's not completely flush against the against the uh, 
vertical stabilizer, it kind of offsets the pattern a little bit, but that's all right. I can handle that. I changed out the stock tires, went with some uh, some Dubro three inch wheels. I'm not going to put the wheel fairings on right now, the wheel pants, because if I want to go with a larger tire for the grass or some kind of tundra tire, I want to be able to put that on. And I also took the uh, drove a larger hole and put uh, the axles that I had on my Nitro Plains Cub that crashed. I took the axles off of that. One thing I will say um, about the fuselage, when you saw how thin it is, is uh, these little longerons that run along here are balsa. You can see this one cracked. Just while I was during the assembly, I had it sitting on top of my toolbox here, and you know, just one little it says balsa. It's really small, and so you can see this one's all right and squared. But you can see when this one breaks, the covering shrinks down around it and pulls it taut. So that's kind of that kind of sucks. But I can always reinforce. I can reinforce it and straighten it back out. Tube in, and then the wings plug in. And there's a tab that sticks slides in from the wing and a screw that goes down through it. I'm not focusing there. And then of course on the back in here there's a, a pin, an alignment pin to keep the wind wings from torquing a little bit. And uh, I actually glued this pin into the fuselage. I know he, I guess you could glue it in the wing. I don't know what the difference would be if you put it in one or the other, just as long as you got it in there. This spinner is, uh, I think it's the perfect size. It's two and a quarter. I mean, you could probably go with a two inch, a little smaller. That wouldn't look too bad. Um, so two inch, two and a quarter, whatever. Looks pretty. Hole in the top for the needle valve to come through. Slightly oversized. I'll say I made it that way on purpose so I can get my big fingers in there. <laughs> the reality is it was a little bit off, and so you know you gotta hog the hole out a little bit there. Uh, fueling valve on the side, and you see the throttle linkage in there. I brought the uh, vent line out through the uh, opening in the firewall. I probably, I may end up closing off that firewall hole in a while so fuel and oil doesn't get in there. And of course, access to the on-off switch. It's right here. Now the front of this window hatch is held in, but there's like two tabs there that go into two slots. And that wouldn't really be enough, I don't think, except for the fact that it slides underneath the cowling also. So I think between the two tabs and then the cowling holding it, I think it should be all right. Um, the magnets are pretty strong and it's, you know, the air is pushing down on it, so it's not gonna go anywhere. So now the last step is to just hit it with an iron and take out a bunch of the wrinkles that have come up and uh, be ready for the maiden. So I know one thing people always kind of wonder about is what's the flying weight. Here we have like, get it to stop moving around, approximately five pounds, 10 ounces. That's with battery, everything ready to fly, but uh, no fuel in it. So about five pounds, 10 ounces.